Welcome, everybody. Um, I'd like to take the time to say it's day five of TMF week, the end of TMF week. This is absolutely amazing. The amount of content that we uh, that we that we were able to create and and learn. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed uh, TMF week as much as um, I have. Um, Today's session, session three, is ETMF, Integration or Data Lake, How Technology Has Evolved to Meet the Clinical Trials of Today. I am Kimberly Bruce. I will be your host today. Um, I'm the Marketing Coordinator at Montreal, and I am pleased to be hosting uh, today's session. So um, if you want, you guys just tell us where you're coming from. You know, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Um, just you know, tell us where you're you're coming from uh, from around the world. Um, just before we get started, I would like to go over a little bit of rules. Um, so just know that it's an interactive session. Please feel free to you know ask any questions in the chat or Q and A section at the top right corner. There will be a couple of polls, you know, just to get a feeler of what's going on with uh, the audience. Um, and that will be next to the Q and A uh, portion uh, at the top right corner. So uh, Nisi will be glad to answer any of your questions after the session has ended, um, just so that you know, um, all sessions are recorded. And just on a side note, after TMF week is complete, um, know that the the site will be up for 30 days, so you'll have access to all the great content that, that was shared throughout the week. Um, and attendees will be receiving a certificate um, of attendance. So be on the lookout for that seven days after the um, conference has ended. And don't forget to network. It's the last networking lunch, so get out there and talk to people. It's what TMF Week is about. It's about learning. It's about the connecting. So get on that and um, make sure to visit uh, the booth the virtual boots that we have set up. So today's speaker is Nisi Nazim. Uh, Nisi manages the clinical systems for clinical systems and records at Daichi Senko. Thank you. Uh, she is responsible for facilitating integration projects between CTMS and ETMF and other system enhancement for the CTMS application. She is also a core member, team member of the Master Data Management Initiative. Prior to Daichi Sankyo, Nisi worked for Accenture Consulting, supporting multiple projects in the pharma industry. Nisi has a master's in uh, information technology management from Western Governors University in Utah. So welcome, Nisi. Uh, happy to have you here. I'm just going to remove uh, my slide so that you can put up your wonderful presentation. I'm looking forward to that today. And you guys just, you know, where are you guys from? Just want to know um, where everyone is from. If you're excited, um, just put it in the chat. Get that going and see how is that. Oh, we see some people from India. Okay, Pocono. Nice. Good morning. Union, New Jersey. That's nice. From the UK. Ottawa. Good stuff. So I'm just going to ask uh, to share the screen. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for welcome. the wonderful introduction. You're welcome. Happy Friday, everyone, and thank you so much for joining my session here. So during the pandemic, we have all realized that we are better connected and more productive with technology. This session here is around ETM of integration and how technology has evolved to meet today's clinical trial needs. And I'm just going to ask you, Nisi, to uh, if you could share your screen and your PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Coming up here now. Uh, hello from India. Hi. Oh, Bucky from Florida, good stuff. And from Toronto, we've got a lot of people. <laughs> oh, awesome. um, Kimberly, I think you need to activate it for me, please. Okay, um, hold on one second. Will not be too long. Okay, hold on. Okay. 
If you can, um, you know, Misi, just tell us a little bit about yourself while I just get uh, your PowerPoint going. Sure. No problem. So currently, everyone, I'm with Daichi Sankyo as Manager Clinical Systems, as Kimberly have just recently um, introduced me. I'm working on multiple integration projects with ETMF and CTMS and even with external vendors. So it's been exciting journey in Daichi Sankyo so far, um, and uh, we are planning to roll out all of our multiple integration projects, uh, hopefully fall this year. So I'm super excited to be presenting this session, and we hope that we can figure out our technology issue here. <laughs> and the <laughs> technology, I must say. <laughs> yes, technology is one of it's 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 amazing. I, I love it, but at the same time, it's uh, it's a little bit yeah, a little bit much. Hold on one second here. I'm just going to grab. Hold on. And thank you everyone for joining from, I guess, all around the world. Uh, excited to have you all here. And I'm sure you, you must be preparing for the weekend. And we see. Yes. Okay, hold on one second. I'm just going to take a look at that. Okay, hold on. Thank you, everyone, for being patient. <laughs> we should be able to fit it out soon. Great. Seems a little, a little bit slower getting there. Thank you guys for being very patient while we are um, fixing this glitch right here. So close that. Okay, I think we have that. Hold on a second. And where are you uh, located, um, let me see. New Jersey. New Jersey, okay, great. Hold on, it is not responding. Give me two seconds. Okay, I think we have it here. Ooh. Okay, let me just get back to you guys here. All right, this should work. And voila. Okay, so yeah. we are good to go. Okay, so um, you see, you just let me know when to move the slides. Sure. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yep, yeah, please proceed. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being patient. And so we'll just jump right into the session. A quick disclaimer before we start. The views and opinions expressed in this presentation are mine and should not be attributed to Montreal and to the organization that I'm affiliated with. Next slide. One more, please. Thank you. So digital transformation is well underway. Over the past several years, sponsors and CROs are adapting digital solutions such as electronic trial master files, ETMF, at a phase, faster pace to manage the trials. And click this. 
A recent survey has indicated that sponsor and CRO use of the ETMF has increased from 14% in 2014 to 31% in 2017 and to 78% in 2020. Go to the next slide, please. Okay. Okay. Now, we have seen that a majority or a lot of reasons for organizations to come up with digital solutions. Some of them are the first one is compliance, improved audit and inspection readiness. Especially now that there's an increased need to have remote access to a TMF to the auditors and inspectors. A TMF that is well maintained and inspection ready reduces operational and enterprise risk for the organization. Number two, technology and accessibility. Cloud-based ETM of solutions provided as a software as a service, SaaS, allows all clinical partners, be it sponsors, CROs, and even sites, secure and global access to dispersed content. Three, performance management. Digital solutions of today have built-in dashboard capabilities. Quality metrics generated within the TMF improve inspection readiness levels and contribute to risk-based study and TMF document management strategies. And four, single source of truth. All users, be it internal or external, share the same current version of documents. Next slide. Ooh, whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we have a poll for you. So as I had mentioned before, it is right next to the Q and A section. So make sure we're going to put it out live. And the question is, do you have ETMF integrated with other clinical systems? So we're going live with that now. We're going to give you a couple of seconds. Um, or I should say a few seconds, not a couple of seconds, but a few seconds to get your um, answers in. And uh, I see that uh, people are getting in there. It's moving. It's moving. I'm loving it. The engagement is coming. We're going to run this for another 10, 5, 10 seconds. So make sure to get your answers in. Top right corner next to Q&A is where the poll lives. So please get your answers in. We want to get as much, uh, we want to get a feel of what's going on with you guys. Okay. Five more seconds, and we're going to end it. So showing the results, apparently uh, it is 44% no, 44% uh, yes, and 55% or 56% no for do you have ETMF integrated with other clinical systems. Wow. So I can see about, you know, Around 50% of the folks are kind of integrated with other clinical systems, and the majority of them have not yet thought about integrations. So, which is good. I mean, we'll get there. <laughs> was that what you were expecting? Yes, that was what I was expecting. Okay, perfect. All right, so moving ahead. Drivers for unification. So on average, organizations use five applications to manage the clinical trial. Each function-specific system implemented to accelerate the clinical trial process provides a variety of targeted benefits to suit different requirements. One, ETMF, so it's our own system, ETMF. It's a centralized location of all essential documents and data records. The next one is the CTMS. It's a system to maintain, manage, and track trial planning and performance. The third one is the EDC, which is the electronic data capture to collect specific data about individual subjects. Four, safety system to track safety information to address the complex drug safety and pharmacovigilance requirements. And five, the regulatory management system that organizes the study information submitted to regulatory authorities. Next slide. So today's common practice of using disparate systems to collect study data 
has made it more difficult to manage trial performance and uncover valuable insights. Some of the challenges with fragmented systems and processes are duplication of data. You realize that the study teams have to enter the same data points across multiple systems, which can lead to the lack of data integrity. And there's always an increased manual effort to enter this data across the multiple systems because each of those applications have their own procedure set in place that needs to be followed. So managing and reconciling all of this trial information across multiple applications have really become a burden on the study teams. And ultimately, that has led to resource constraints and cost implications. So what we felt was that the digital solutions will accelerate trial management uh, and processes. The siloed systems and processes have now led to lack of visibility to study progress and ultimately slower study execution. Time for another poll. Yes. So this poll, I'm going to go live right now. Has your organization implemented data standardization principles? Options yes, no, working on it, no, not yet. So the poll is now live. Please get your answers in. Top right corner next to the Q&A. Um, we're going to give this a few seconds to, you know, so that people can get in their answers. I'm seeing that it's, some stuff is coming in here now. Remember to answer the poll. It's at the Q and it's next to the Q and A section at the top right corner. I, I love it when polls are running and I'm seeing numbers coming in. It gets me very, very <laughs> it makes me very happy. <laughs> oh, numbers are coming in. We're gonna make this. We're gonna let this run for another five, ten seconds. Answers in. Interesting. Yeah, you're seeing numbers. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's good to end. And we're going to show results. So as you can see here, uh, has your organization implemented data standardization principle for yes, we got 41%, no, 3%. Mm -hmm. Working on it got 41% and no plans yet, 13 14%. So it looks like it's a tie between yes and working on it. So yes. which means that you guys have already started thinking about data standardization and its importance to the organization, so which is awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving ahead, data standardization. Data standardization is obviously the process of making the information consistent. With data standardization, there's a traceability and data links across the systems. We all know that it enables efficiency gains related to time-intensive processes involving acquisition, aggregation, analysis, and report preparation. It also eliminates the expense and time to reformat the data to transfer. So in a sense, data standards, it's simply making sure that the applications speak the same language. While we think about data standardization, it's always good to consider the two principles of RDM, which is the reference data management, and MDM, which is the master data management. RDM, reference data management, provides the processes and technologies for recognizing, harmonizing, and sharing relatively static data sets for reference by multiple systems and processes. You can think of it as a dictionary or a lookup table right, which we can all within the organization leverage to make sense of the data. Now, some of the common examples that we have heard about are the state codes and country codes. So if you have a dictionary, right, with, let's say, IOSA standard three-digit character country code, so regardless of the different functions that you have, if you say USA, we know that it means United States or United States of America. The same principle of using a dictionary can be applied to clinical trials. So you can have a dictionary for therapeutic areas, indications. So come up with a standard set of dictionary terms that you can use and leverage across the organization. The second principle is the master data management, MDM. MDM involves creating a single master record for all critical business data from across internal and external data sources and systems. So basically what that means is come up with a common definition or certain set of rules 
for a business data domain. For example, for products, protocols, investigators, and sites, think about what kind of rules or definition would you define? For example, for investigator, um, I can think about a certain rule for first name, last name, maybe even a middle name, you know, the email address, and the location of the investigator. If somebody comes and tells me, oh, there's John Smith from Louisiana in USA, John or J. Smith, and John M. Smith, is that the same person? Well, Master Data Management Solution can help you with that and give you a golden record or a single source of truth. Now, with MTM, the information becomes more consistent and reliable for the organization. And with MDM solutions, your data quality improves and so does your business operation. So failing to set up such standards at an organization level would mean that your business intelligence reports can be inaccurate and in some cases even impossible to connect the data across multiple systems for efficient study execution. Next slide, Kim. Okay. Here's an interesting concept, data lake. So we all know there's a huge volume of data generated by just one clinical trial. Imagine trying to store a large amount of data from multiple clinical trials in one location that's going to be cost effective and productive. That's definitely going to be a challenge. So commonly seen structures or repositories in today's organizations are what's called a data warehouse. A data warehouse is pretty much a uh, a storage repository, but it's always having pre-processed data and structured data. So when you have a data warehouse, what that typically means, you come up with a business domain that you would like to have the data stored for. You would come up with certain requirements, certain rules, and you would build the data warehouse. Now the data that needs to go to the data warehouse it needs to be pre-processed, structured, cleansed, transformed, and then finally can be stored into the data warehouse. Now what's interesting with the data lake, which is a recent term that's been coming up lately, is a storage repository that cannot just store structured data, but even unstructured data. Think of data like as, you know, um, a you know, typical lake in its natural state. You have multiple streams coming in, you have sometimes precipitations, and users can do with the water in whatever format they want. They can take a dive in the lake, they can swim across it, they can take samples from it, they can you know, even take it for drinking. So similarly, data lake is the same. You have source data coming from different places and you can use it in whatever format you want. So data lake retains all of the data, the data that's currently being used in the organization, the data you're planning to use, and even data that do not have any use right now, but you still want to store it just in case you have some uh, use for it in the future. So data are lake, again, returns all data. The architecture is really fluid and scalable. Irrespective of data warehouse, which only can store certain data types, data lake can support all data types, images, log files, text files, um, any, any files which is, you know, of larger size. So all kind of data types can be stored in the data lake. Data lake also supports all user types. So typically in an organization, you know, 80% of the users are what we call as operational users, you know, who need data to perform certain reporting, for key performance metrics, et cetera. So data lake also supports those kind of users. But one good thing of a data lake is that, let's say you have a need to see the source data in its raw format, you can access it in data lake. Whereas in a data warehouse, the data is always structured, so you have to wait for it to be transformed. Data lake adapts easily to changes. So I've already touched on this. If a if let's say there was a need to have um, a certain field from a source, right? If it was in a data warehouse, you have to think about how, how do I change the structure? Um, it takes a lot of validation and you would also need to probably transform the data for the data warehouse. But in data lake, 
you can just easily pull the source data in and use it in the raw format as you need. Faster insight. Obviously, because we don't have to wait for transformation, cleansing, and all that, you, and you have the source in its raw format, you can have better insight to the data. But that does not mean that all the data is in the raw format and that's how you get it. If at all we see there is a more use or a need to have a transform data, data link and store those kind of data sets in transfer format and can be used in the system. Next slide. ETMF integration. An efficient and compliant ETMF must work in harmony with a variety of e-clinical systems in order to contain the required information. The two of the significant regulatory requirements that we all know are completeness and accuracy of the ETMF. Therefore, documents must be available in a timely manner for defined milestones with the aim to maintain the TMF inspection ready. Next slide, Kim. Thank you. Some of the clinical systems that provide data or documents to the ETMF include, one, the clinical trial management system, CTMS. CTMS can be the source of authority, uh, authority source of distributed data, such as you know, the study design, the study type, the study phase, but even the sites and investigators. Milestones. So we can have milestone information or a trigger for a milestone from CTMS. So as an example, for study startup, we can get the first site initiated visit date from CTMS. And then based on that, you know, we can have triggers in place to say, yep, you have to get the startup documents in by this date. Similarly, you know, if the CTMS system is tracking the TMF complete as a milestone, once the TMF is truly complete, that information can be fed back into the CTMS. CTMS can also be the source for documents such as monitoring trip reports and follow-up letters. The second system that we can integrate with ETMF would be the safety system. It's a source for safety distribution documents such as safety notification letters, investigative brochures, and dear investigator letters. Another system that we can think about integrating with ETMF would be the regulatory management system. Yeah. Yes. So for regulatory management system, you know, the documents such as protocols, study reports, and 1572 as an example, we can have them originate in ETMF and push to the regulatory management system, or we can have them originated within the regulatory management system and cross-linked to the ETMF. Next slide. So in short, here are the integration benefits. One is a reduced amount of processes. So with integration, what you can see, there's going to be a decreased amount of processes, reducing this uh, burden of study teams and potentially lowering trial costs. So the study teams can just have, you know, um, enter trial information, like let's say the basic trial information into CTMS, and that can be integrated into the ETMF. So they don't have to go into ETMF and set up the study again. The second benefit is the increased stakeholder engagement due to better visibility across trial data. And with that, we'll have increased trial oversight thereby reducing risk and performance issues. And we can also see improved study quality with increased data integrity and compliance. Next slide. And click, please. So what we can see is that data standardization and integration brings the systems together across the e-clinical universe. Next slide. Yes, obviously we have seen the integration benefits, but here are some factors you really need to consider before you plan for integration. One, assess the return on investment and conduct risk reduction analysis. So if we have legacy systems in place and maybe another system as a cloud-based system, does it really make sense to do an integration with the legacy systems? Think about how much effort you would need to probably 
customize the integration. Two, adoption of MDM and RDM principles for indigenous systems. So look into the data and see how cleansed they are. Are they really following the data standardization principles that you have outlined for our organization? Think about the effort that you would need to get those clean if they're not following the standards. Three, identify and document the authority source. This is especially important for ETMF. We need to obviously figure out which is the source for our documents and data and which is the target and have that really documented. Four, point to point P2P integration versus integration to data exchange platform or a data lake. With P2P integration, it's basically you have to modify the application code before you can connect them, just to send and receive information. So anytime your system goes and upgrade, you'd always have to make sure that the connection between the two systems also is stable and valid. Versus if you're using a data exchange platform, which is obviously going to be scalable, you have less concerns in doing so. And the last point, is stability and validation. So think about, again, an effort that is needed to validate the integration that you're going to set up and the stability of the systems planned for the integration. Next slide, please. So in summary, through integration and data sanitization, we can reduce data duplication and data errors, increase operational efficiency, improve the study quality, and increase compliance. And that brings us to the end of the presentation, and I'm opening up for Q&As. Excellent. Thank you so much, Nisi. Um, and uh, thank you guys for you know um, being like very patient with us. We're getting the presentation up. Also, thank you very much for the questions and your interaction and engagement for the session. So I do have... Um, a few questions. So number one, um, can you elaborate on the ETL terminology you touched on in the presentation? Sure. So ETL is a terminology that is used especially for integration to a data exchange platform. So ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. So when extract is simple, you know, we have to extract data from source systems, obviously. So that's what E to E means. T is transform. So basically, you know, you have to think about, do you need some kind of transformation to the data or change or cleanse to the data that before you load into the system? And L is obviously loading the data to the target systems. Excellent. Um, what are some examples of data exchange or data lake platforms? Okay. You've encountered it. So um, some of the popular platforms that we have seen in the industry include um, Informatica, Oracle, Microsoft, and Tipco. Thank you. Um, what resources are required for successful implementation of an integration? OK, that's a good question. So one of the common mistakes that an organization have is assuming that when you think about integration, it's all IT responsibility, but that's not the case. Even though the IT own the system, the business owns the data. So it's important to have resources, resources like a business me, a business analyst, or a business process engineer. When you have conversations about um, the data, the transformation that is re required to the data, the kind of data that you need, any documents that you need, you know, what's considered as a source and a target. So it's critical to have such means in the conversations. Okay, great, thank you. So I'm gonna get some more questions up here. Um, and guys, feel free putting it into uh, the Q&A in the chat. Um, so we have one question. Are we talking about converting all data to a unique format or the ability to consult all the data in their respective format? regardless of what it is? So again, it depends on your requirements. What is your system need and what is um, in what format? So um, it depends, right? So if, if, if it, let's say you are interested in getting the data in the raw format, that is good. 
also now think about where the data sits like what is the data domain and is there a principle or data standardization concept applied to it right so as i was mentioning for investigators you're going to get investigated data from multiple sources so if you don't have a master data management set in you're going to get duplicates of the same investigator so mm. it's better to have you know, a master data management principle setting for such data domains. So in that case, what would happen is you get all of those different information that flow into master data management. And so your system can get the unique record or the golden record for that investigator. So it all depends on your requirements, how many sources are providing the data, and if at all there's a data standardization principle that's is available for the organization. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we have another one here. Um, how would you suggest a company get started with integrations? Is there a natural first use case or a system to integrate into ETMF? Yes. So we have seen this, and I was just um, in, I introduced the challenges here um, in my presentation. You know, we have all started seeing multiple clinical systems in use, clinical file management systems. ETMF, we have safety systems. So typically when we think about ETMF, the first thing that we do in ETMF is obviously setting up your study. So mm -hmm. if at all you have a source for that information, and let's say it's CTMS, it's and you consider CTMS as the source which the clean data with the clean data sets, that is your first use case. Try to get that information. Um, and then you can think about you know your document uh, um, sources, right? So, for example, um, you know, do you have a safe notification data? Like, how much of a document that you're getting is that a data lake involved? Um, so, those are other use cases that you can explore to see where the source is. Again, sometimes, you know, um, if the source itself is ETMS, we would not really need an integration. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna I'm just, just remove you from the screen. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to here's another question. What is the way to integrate all the data all together in a single window? Is it the future AI process? So this is an interesting question and that that has that is something that has come up recently um, in many organizations, right? So what is the you know, option or a solution to have, you know, a cross-function trial visibility, right? Be it your financial health, be it ETMF, be it your, you know, trial manage, uh, trial progression, right? So where can I see all that information? So typically what we have seen is, you know, the industry is moving towards to have an analytical um, capability on top of a data lake. So you can have better visibility across um, the trial um, and the different functions for a specific study. And yes, an AI process would also be included in that. Um, um, and that's something I would say it's in the future. Excellent. Um, so we have another question here. Um, and I, I, I'm trying to see obstacles in data type mapping uh, that you faced. This has you, have you faced any obstacles in the data type mapping? Yes, I've seen multiple challenges. So Can you give some examples of that? Yeah, so like I, said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, so typically what we've seen is, you know, um, let's say you have same information across multiple systems, right? Mm -hmm. We need to first figure out which is really the true source, right? Okay. So give a priority to it. That's one thing that I've seen. The second is obviously trying to figure out what are the data points that you need. Right, so you need to come up with a list of data points that you need. Um, sometimes we, we have seen that people like, okay, they come up with a list, let's say the top 10, like it's, you know, they have 10 fields of interest and they start to work on it. But then towards, you progress towards uh, in, the, in the project itself, you've seen that, oh, what about this, what about that? So it's always good to come up with um, a comprehensive list of requirements, prioritize them and just focus on them for the time being. Right, what is critical for you at the moment? So once you have that down, now you go into the data mapping process. So that's where I, you know, it becomes a bit tricky. You need to really get into nitty gritty details such as what's the format that you need that information in. So people tend to kind of skim over that aspect, right? 
So as an example, what I've seen is um, you expect, let's say, a date um, for like the Google date, you know, documentation practice of why, 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 and then, you know, all that. People tend to you know, miss that part. But it's really important to have information. Also, like I said, you need to have the business involved in such exercises because they are better positioned to say, okay, if I get this data in, what is it going to do to my, let's say, my document, right? I have all this metadata in. You do you really want to update the metadata or do you just want to ignore it? So you need to all, you know, always think about, okay, what's going to happen if I get this information in this format? So it's always good to have a collaborative exercise with the IT and the business when you go into the, um, you know, the data mapping um, sessions. That answers questions. So again, these are some experience I've had in the challenges. So lessons well, learned. I, lessons learned. I think that's all part of it, right? It's it's yeah. you know you're learning as you go, and then you have all these great insights. And here's an example of that. So thank you very much for sharing. I think we have time for one more question here. Um, and this one is: What would you? What would be the biggest challenge um, integrating ETMF and EDC? And yeah, EDC. So that's a great question. Um, right now, I mean, I can say from my experience, I mean, we have not had any integrations with EDC directly into ETMF. Um, it's mostly, you know, there would be a stop gap, I would say, to the CTMS to make sure that the information, first of all, is correct. Um, and then potentially, I would say, into ETMF. So some of the information that we can get um, from the EDC, I would say, would be the ECRFs. Thank you so much, um, Lisa. I think, I think we're running down to like the end. Um, I want to say thank you so much for uh, this session. Um, it was very informative. Um, and it was great that you're able to tap into some of the um, things that you've gone through in order to share um, that specific like, information um, on, on your past experience. So thank you very much for that. And I just wanted to let everybody know that the next session, the final session of the day uh, will be at 1230. It's a panel discussion. What does the next generation ETMF system look like? So again, this is about like uh, this theme for today is about the future, what what is to come. So it should be a very interesting panel uh, to come. And I just want to say uh, once again, thank you very much, Nisi, uh, for your presentation. Um, and I just also wanted you guys to know to head to the lounge, okay? Because it's networking time. Uh, probably like one of the last times you're gonna be able to connect with each other, TMF week again, connection and education. So, you know, get to the lounge and make sure that you get that done. Um, again, thank you very much, Nisi. And we'll like to say to everybody, have a great weekend um, and a wonderful week and a wonderful summer. And um, hopefully we'll be able to reconnect again soon. Thanks so much, Kim. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.